President Biden waived U.S. sanctions on Russia's Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Our next guest wants to undo that policy. Senator Kevin Kramer, Republican from North Dakota, joins us now. Mr. Senator, do you have enough support to bring back sanctions on Nord Stream 2 and kill that pipeline? Can you do it? Well, I believe that we can, Stuart. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> when I introduced the bill, um, within a matter of a few hours, we had 14 or 15 co-sponsors. And remember that this is a, an issue where the Nord Stream 2, the official policy of the United States is to oppose the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which makes it very absurd that the president of the United States, the commander in chief, looking out for our national security and our economy, would actually lift the sanctions that um, that we had put into the National Defense Authorization Act just last year. So it, it's really absurd. But here well, we have a president have who's deliberately to... and aggressively killing our energy industry and jobs right. while at the same time trying to you know build Russia. It makes no sense. Have you got any Democrat support at all for this? Well, remember, remember this, this announcement was made last night. We just introduced the bill yesterday. We've not talked to Democrats. Of course, we're, we're now not in session until next Monday. But we do have a number of Democrats who have spoken out against what the president did in lifting the sanctions. Um, we have members of the Armed Services Committee and the other committees that are Democrats who have been uh, strongly opposed to lifting sanctions, that have, have been greatly opposed, of course, to Nord Stream 2. Like I said, it's the official position of the United States of America. But here's the really crazy thing. Vladimir Putin's natural gas is actually produced and shipped via pipeline with about a 40% greater carbon footprint than U.S. natural gas put in liquid form and shipped to the same locations. So it's bad for our economy, bad for national security, and bad for the environment. Rather than that, it's a great idea. I mean, so absurd, it's hard to believe. Yes, that's extraordinary. You're right on all counts, Mr. Senator. While we have you with us, I wish you would comment on Israel and Hamas, the ceasefire agreement after 11 days of conflict. Here's what's getting to us. President Biden is going to provide rapid humanitarian assistance to Gaza. OK, we got that. But we will also, America will also lead the rebuilding effort for, uh, for Gaza. Why do we have to pay for this, Mr. Senator? Well, it's it's just about as upside down as what we were just talking about, but you know, letting Vladimir Putin build an energy industry while we destroy ours. Remember that much of the conflict in the Middle East, and while there's some obviously very serious and deep-rooted historical problems, some of it's re directly related to to oil. Remember, Iran, of course, is really fighting the war for Hamas. They're, they're, the Hamas is their proxy, as is Hezbollah, and um, so once again, we're playing footsie with Iran, looking at raising their, lifting their sanctions, allowing them to put more oil into the marketplace that just gives them more money to fight these wars. So it, it just makes no sense whatsoever. I, I am heartened the most by the fact that Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, has has stated, um, you know, if, if this fight picks up again, if the rockets start flying back at Israel again, the response will be severe, and it needs to be. And we need to stand with Israel in this uh, unequivocally. Yes, absolutely. You might want to tell the left-wing Democrats that, too. But, Mr. Senator, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you again real soon. Always Thank mine. You, Thank you, Stuart.